everyone, it's Julie Shane with Yoginiology.com. Today's 60 minute live class is going to be a intermediate flow to kind of unstick the sticky parts of your life right now. So whether that is something that feels physically stuck or maybe it's a mental stick, which is kind of the direction that I uh, am building this class for. I think a lot of times we get into kind of a rut in life, whether it's personally or uh, in a job or with a goal that we have, and things can start to feel really stagnant and it feels yucky and awful and it makes you want to give up and just go to sleep for three days. So this class is really designed to get the energy flowing in the body, which will help to alleviate some of that stuck feeling. And it's also going to hopefully get your mentally out of kind of whatever crevice or rut you feel like you could be in. So um, we're not going to specifically be using any props today, but if you want to grab a block, that can always come in handy um, on some poses. So if you have one nearby, go ahead and grab that. And then we're going to start in just a comfortable seat. So I'll give you a second to get anything that you need. And then when you're ready, go ahead and come to your mat. You can join kneeling or sitting cross-legged or whatever feels the most comfortable for you today. And then once you settle in, close your eyes. You can let your hands just rest comfortably on your thighs. And then you can choose to either let the hands be palm face up, which tends to signify that you want to receive energy or if you're feeling kind of like slow and lethargic today, do palms face up. If you're feeling like you have all of this excess energy and you don't quite know what to do with it and that's what's leaving you feeling stuck, then go ahead and have your hands palms face down. Remember your first few breaths don't count. So just allow those to come naturally. And then slowly begin to let the breath deepen. Move your shoulders down away from your ears. Sit up nice and tall with just a slight pull in from the belly. Relax your face and your jaw. And then tap into whatever the source you might, whatever you think the source might be of you feeling stuck. For some of us, it might be really easy to pinpoint with a simple word. For others, it might be a little more vague, so give it some time. Are you feeling stuck because you have too many choices to make and you're paralyzed with that? Are you feeling stuck because you're lacking inspiration? Are you feeling stuck because you're lacking trust that everything is going to work out? Maybe you've been at something for a really long time and haven't found the success you're hoping to find and you're feeling stuck in that position like nothing's ever going to change And try to boil whatever is leaving you with this feeling of being stuck. Try to bring that down to one word. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's a lack of trust. Maybe you're feeling scattered. Maybe you're feeling disheartened. And once you've found that word, or have found that word, think the opposite. And let that be your intention for class today. If you feel like you can't trust what is happening in the process, let your word be trust today. If you're feeling scattered and disorganized, maybe your word is focus or clarity. 
you're feeling dispassionate, maybe your word will be passion. Take a word and stick with it. Commit to that word. Then we'll do a simple breathing exercise. You can keep your eyes shut if you need to change how you're sitting. Go ahead and change how you're sitting. So it's like alternate nostril breathing, only a little more effort filled. So you're going to take one of your hands and you're going to place your middle and your index finger on your third eye. You'll cover one nostril with your thumb and you're going to take a deep, powerful breath in, like you're trying to suck up something through a straw. And then cover that nostril and exhale really strongly out through the other nostril. And try to lengthen it for as long as you can. Then take a deep inhale. Exhale strongly. Keep moving in that pattern. So feel like there's liquid kind of at the base of your pelvis. And with each inhale, you're drawing that up. And with each exhale, you're dispelling it out into the universe or back down into your pelvis. It's like refreshing the energy of your body. Do a couple more rounds. So exhale first. Then inhale, do the same nostril. Then exhale, then inhale. As strong as you can. And end with an exhale. Lengthen it. Take a few normal breaths. Sit with your intention. Sit with that already shift in energy that's taking place in your body. And when you're ready, we're gonna go up to the top of the mat standing. So coming into Tadasana Mountain Pose, finding whatever stance suits you best this morning. Spreading through your toes, pushing down through all four corners of the feet, letting the arms rest naturally by your, by your side. Close your eyes. Start to bring a little bit more trust into your practice as the eyes close. Feeling your body react to that just simple shift. Then keeping the eyes closed, inhale, spread your fingers wide, reach the hands up over the head. Exhale, pull the hands into the heart. Do that four more times. Inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Two more at your own pace. As you finish, go ahead and interlace the hands behind the back. You can still keep your eyes closed. Reach the knuckles down towards your tailbone as you lift the heart up. Bend your knees, break your chest and belly over the thighs, chin in towards the chest, within the shoulders. So the more you can keep your eyes shut in this practice, the better, because it just helps to develop that trust and really lets you tune in to what's going on in your body, both energetically, physically, and energetically, mentally. Exhale, go ahead and bring the hands down to the ground, step your right foot to the back of the mat, get the left knee over the ankle, inhale, lengthen the spine, and then exhale, walk your hands over to the right and just kind of drop down as low as feels comfortable here. You're pulling the navel in towards the spine, starting to open the hips pretty powerfully, leaving the back of the neck nice and relaxed. 
Then set your right heel down on the floor. Continue to walk the hands over to the right. Start to straighten the left leg. Turn the left toes. Exhale, foam. Squeeze your inner ankles towards each other. Pull the belly in. And just let the head shake. Start to walk the hands back towards the top of your mat. Turn the left toes. Bend the left knee. Bend the right knee. Inhale. Come up into a variation of high lunge. Both knees bent. Inhale. Pull your hands into your heart. Exhale. Open the chest. Inhale. Reach the hands up. Exhale. Pull the hands down. Open the chest. Let the arms move. This helps to unstick energy. Legs are being really powerful right now. One more inhale. Hands come up. As you start to exhale, pull the hands towards the heart and open up. Hands down to the floor. Step back to a bent leg down dog to start. Kind of like a little crouching kitty cat. Let the chin come in towards the chest. Spread the fingers nice and wide. And then straighten just the right leg. Go ahead and reach back through the heels. And inhale, look forward. Step the right foot forward. Coming into that high lunge. Inhale, lengthening the heart. And then exhale, walking the hands over just a bit to the left. And dropping into a nice big deep hip opener. Keep the back leg powered. So this quad is working a ton. And then start to walk the hands more towards the center as you drop your left heel down. Parallel the feet. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold. Keep the legs active, belly active. Breath easy. And then start to walk the hands forward again. Turn the right toes, bend the right knee, bend the left knee. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, start to pull the hands down, open up four more times. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, one more, inhale, exhale, hands down to the ground, bent leg downward facing dog, get into the shoulders, and then straighten just the left leg, and add a little bit of a twist here if you want. And then straighten both legs. You can keep pedaling them out if you want them into more of a traditional Adho Mukha. And inhale, round forward into plank pose. Take a nice big breath here. And you're going to exhale out powerfully through the nose three times. Last one, lengthen that exhale. Two more times. Inhale, exhale powerfully three. One more, inhale, exhale. On that exhale, back into downward facing dog. Inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, look forward, long spine. Exhale, belly in, fold. Go ahead and widen the feet out, turn the toes out about 45 degrees, bend the knees. So it's like you're halfway coming into Malasana. So Malasana is all the way down. You're going to keep the butt up, belly in. Inhale, reach the arms forward. Lift all 10 toes up if you can. Good. And then release your fingers, push the palms forward, drop the chin into the chest. Three rounds of that strong three breath exhale. Two more. 
One more. Inhale, start to come up. Keep the hands interlaced. Bring the feet back together. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hands in prayer position at the heart as you pull forward. Chin in towards the chest. Good. Put a little bend in the knees. This time, left foot's going back. Get the right knee right over the ankle. Bend the left knee again. Inhale, come up. High lunge variation. I want you to take the right wrist with your left hand. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, bend to the left. Good. Inhale, come back up. Take the wrist, the other wrist, left hand. Exhale, bend to the right. They keep leaning to the right, come into a high lunge twist, but the back left knee still bent. Hands at heart. Move the chest up towards the ceiling. Try not to grip through the toes. Exhale, bring the hands down outside the right foot. Go ahead and turn the right toes to the right. Come onto the outer edge of the left foot. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Exhale, hands down to the top of the mat. You're going to hop switch the feet. Go to the other side. So left knees right over the left ankle. Bend the right knee. Inhale, come up. Settle into the stance. Start by taking the left wrist. Bend to the right. And then switch sides with an exhale. Keep reaching, keep reaching. Revolved high lunge, but keep the back leg bent. Pull the belly in, turn and twist. And bring the hands down outside the foot, straighten the back leg, turn the left toes. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale. Hands down, top of the mat, turn the toes, hop, switch the feet again. Yeah, this time, back leg stays straight. Inhale, come up, high lunge. Exhale, open up into warrior two, left heel comes down. Reach through the arms. Turn the palms face up. Inhale, pull the hands up. Exhale, lower. Again, inhale. Exhale, get a little deeper, maybe into the front thigh. Inhale. Exhale, two more. Inhale. Exhale, one more. Inhale. Exhale. So this heat we're building is helping us to unstick that energy, right? Take the right hand, bring it inside the right foot. You can have a block here. Reach the left arm over the ear. Try to keep the left ribs moving back as the right ribs move forward. Then take the left hand down to the floor. Pick the left heel up. Walk the right foot to the edge of the mat. Hang here for a moment. So even if you could come down onto the forearms, don't do it right now. Just pause here in this variation of the lunge. I want you to take your right shoulder, and you're going to start to bring it underneath the right leg so your right hand comes outside the right foot. And you're going to come onto the inner edge of the back foot. Bring all of your weight into the right hand. See if you can kick the right foot up and hold it with the left hand. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Set it down. Undo the hands. Hop switch to the other side. Inhale, come up, high lunge. Exhale, drop the right heel down, open up, warrior two. Stay with that intention. Keep breathing it into your heart center. Turn the palms face up. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, open. Sink down a little more. Four more, inhale. Exhale, inhale, 
Exhale, two more. Settle into your pose. And drop the left hand inside the left foot. Reach the right arm over the ear. Long spine. You should feel a nice long line of energy through the right side body. And drop the right hand down. Walk the left foot over to the edge of the mat. Stay up on the hands and just feel the right hip flexor starting to open. Maybe start to get into the left hip a little bit here too. Just see what's happening. And then you're going to start to take the left shoulder underneath the left leg. You're going to come onto the inner edge of the right foot. Bring all of your weight onto the left hand. See if you can pick the left foot up and grab it with the right hand. Release when you're ready. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Come down to the knees. You're going to take the right shin and cross it over the left. And then start to go back a little bit into child's pose, but don't let your hips go all the way back. And then extend the arms out forward. So we're going to pulse up and down here a little bit. It really helps to move some of that emotional energy that can feel stuck around. So as you breathe, just kind of bounce up and down. So the movement doesn't match the breath, but you're very much mindful of the breath. I'm going to keep doing this. A few more breath rounds. Try to let the pulsing movement feel as natural as it can. I know for a lot of us it feels very different. And then just slowly release into a nice variation on child's pose. So it's like a little bit of puppy, a little bit of child's pose, shins crossed, forehead down. And then bring your hands in prayer and just let the palms of the hands rest at the base of the skull. Go ahead and release the hands, spread the fingers wide. Keep your legs crossed, tuck the toes, cross leg downward facing dog. For most of us, what this does is it starts to open up the outer seam of the left leg a little bit more. Go ahead and step your right foot forward. Drop the left heel down. We'll come up into warrior one. Inhale. Go ahead and take the hands behind the back. Interlace the fingers. Inhale, reach the heart up. Breathe out three rounds of that three breath again. So breath in. Sink in as you exhale two more times. One more time. On that last exhale, fold into... Humble warrior. Pushing through the inner edge of the front foot, outer edge of the back foot. Release the chin in towards the chest. Exhale, release the hands down either side of the front foot. Come on to the outer edge of your left foot. Walk the left hand forward a bit so that the wrist crease is just in front of your left shoulder. Spread the fingers wide. And then step the right foot back on top of the left. Inhale, come up, Vashisasana, side plank. You lift the hips up, reach the right arm over the ear. And then take the wrist in circles a few times each direction. Bring the hand down to the ground, downward facing dog. Come down to the knees, 
This time, left shin, I believe your other shin, goes on top. So start to come back, walk the hands forward. And then pulse up and down. So if the forehead's not touching the ground yet, you should feel a nice stretch through the shoulders. So this pulsing creates an energetic vibration in the body that helps to free some of what is stuck. And I find that it's incredibly powerful with emotional stickiness. Forgiving, letting go, moving on. few more rounds of breath and then when you're ready to settle into about a minute hold of this variation of child's pose you can bend the elbows hands in prayer this helps to ground you a little more come back to your intention Release the hands down when you're ready, coming into the cross legged version of downward facing dog. Notice the difference, notice the change that takes place by switching up a familiar pose. See what feels good about it, focus on that. And then when you're ready, step the left foot forward, dropping the right heel down. About heel to heel alignment for your one as we start to come up. Bending into the front knee as much as is comfortable. And go ahead and interlace the hands behind the back. Take a deep breath in. Three rounds of that powerful three breath exhale. As you finish the last round on that exhale, Start to come into Humble Warrior. So free your toes. Use the feet for balance. Power up the legs and then add the core just by simply pulling the navel in. Release the hands down. Come onto the outer edge of the right foot. Walk the right hand forward a bit. Stack the left foot on top. Inhale, side plank. And then start to reach the left hand over the ears. You lift the hips up and then take the circles, take the circles with the wrist. Plant the hands down dog. Inhale for to plank. Three rounds of that breath. Take a deep breath in. Hold the belly in as you exhale. One more. Exhale, chaturanga. All the way to the floor. Tuck the toes or flip the feet so the top of the feet are on the floor. Roll the shoulders back. Squeeze the elbows in. Inhale, come up. Uttanasana. Cobra pose. Move the shoulders away from the ears as you draw the shoulder blades down the back. And then exhale, start to lower, but come onto the forearms. So you can bring the hands together in prayer position so that the pinky edge of the finger is down on the ground. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips up, dolphin pose. Start to walk the feet in a little bit maybe, but keep the shoulders back behind the elbows. Move the heart and chest back toward the thighs. And then round down through the heels as much as you can. Three rounds of that three-part exhale. One more. Drop the knees down. Keep the forearms on the floor, but you're going to have 
the hands separate now. So you're going to spread through your hands, spread through your fingers, you have the shoulders over the elbows. You're going to lift the knees up, but keep them bent and start to walk the feet in. We're going to come into little baby pigeon pose, or baby crow pose, sorry, baby crow pose. So you're going to try to get your knees up on the outer part of the arms. Look forward, squeeze in, see if you can lift the feet up. Tiny little arm balance. Hold it, squeeze, then let the knees come down. So you want your toes together, knees apart. We'll try it one more time in a minute. So we're going to come into a variation of Supta Virasana. This is more the yin version of it. It's very therapeutic for the sacrum and for helping to recreate that natural curve in our low back. So this is a nice version of it. So you actually have your toes together under you and your knees are apart, which is different than the traditional Supta Virasana that we do. You're going to start to kind of lower down. You want to keep the knees down. So this might be where you go. Maybe it's down to the forearms. Or maybe you can lower yourself all the way down onto the mat. Find a comfortable position for the arms. Close the eyes. We'll take about 10 breaths. Come back to that word or intention that you set. And as you breathe that in, what part of this pose right now physically can you relax? What's trying to keep you stuck and is not wanting to let go? And with that intention in mind, can you start to release? So rather than sitting up like this, I want you to kind of roll to one side, take the feet out from under you, pause for a moment on your back. You can feel, at least I can, and hopefully you can, kind of the energetic shift that happens in a pose like that. It's a powerful pose. Start to draw the knees into the chest just briefly, and then rock yourself up. Plant the hands down with facing dog. We're going to try that baby crane pose one more time. So go ahead and bring the knees down, drop the forearms to the floor, shoulders over the elbows, spread the fingers wide. So like you're coming into dolphin pose, only don't straighten the legs, keep them bent. Start to walk in, get as compact as you can, get the knees to the outer arms, look forward, squeeze, and you lift the feet up. Hold it for as long as you can, it's hard pose. And then you can drop right back into that variation, I think in yin they call it a saddle pose. Knees wide, settling into wherever you're settling into. 10 breaths. What can you let go? Everything that's getting in your way of getting unstuck, it's all just an illusion. Right? We can make whatever we want out of life just by being persistent, by declaring it, and saying, today I am going to be successful. I am, and not even I am going to be successful, I am successful. I am persistent. I am confident. I am this. And just that declaration can start to vibrate the cells in your body, start to create change. Go ahead and release the legs out from under you, lie down on your back, be as still as you can for a moment, feeling those shifts taking place, maybe some stuck energy getting free. Hug the knees into the chest lightly, rock yourself up, plant your hands down to face the dog. So you're going to start to walk the hands back towards the feet. You can keep the legs bent or you can straighten them, grab opposite elbows, and just kind of hang down. Chin in towards the chest. And then 
Take the hands behind, grab opposite elbows behind the legs if you can. Start to slide the forearms around the backs of the legs as much as you can to open the shoulders here just a little bit more. Do you feel a nice big stretch through the upper back or a release in the low back? And release the hands, take the feet wide like we did before setting up for that kind of half malasana pose. So you're gonna do that again, bend the knees, butt out, don't sit all the way down. Hands to your heart, power up the legs. So we're going to work on getting, getting into a shoulder pressing pose and so um, I once heard it's like Quasimodo going to school, and I love that, uh, that kind of visualization in my mind. It makes me laugh every time. So here you are, kind of hunched back, and you're going to imagine your legs are backpack straps, and you're going to throw your backpack on. Then I want you to kind of grab on to your feet and start to walk. And you have to make it all the way to the top of your neck. It looks silly, but it's strengthening, and it's a nice prep. Make it all the way to the top. You got to school. Good. So then sit down a little more. Take the hands flat on the floor. Spread your fingers wide. Try to put your backpack strap on a little more. Let the butt come down. Shift your weight back. See if you can let your feet come up. And maybe you can cross. This can turn into firefly and different things. This pose is really nice. If you're up in it and can stay a little bit, try to do three rounds of that breath. One more. Slowly release down. Just kind of land down on your butt. Hug the knees into the chest. Tiny little knots, and then get the abs fired up. You've got one more kind of big pose, and then cool it down. So keep the legs bent, arms up to the sides, or you can straighten them, chest up. Three rounds of that three part exhale. One more. Slowly release the feet down. You separate the legs about hip width apart. So rather than coming into Paschimottanasana, we're going to do the, the yin version of the pose here. So this is called caterpillar pose. So rather than lifting the heart and trying to hinge with a flat back, we want you to actually slouch and reach for the feet. And this helps to release the muscles along the back a little more. So I'm not feeling anything in my hamstrings. That's not what we're going for. We're going for this release in the back. And come on up. So our last Kind of big pose here before we cool down. So this is what we're going to do in parts. So you can just work on it one part at a time. So the goal, uh, the final or peak pose is to get into Ashta Vikrasana, um, which is uh, a really cool kind of arm balance -y thing. It's powerful in strength, which is what we're going for here because the strength and the heat behind all of these poses helps to make that physical change, like actually at a cellular level, and it helps you to realize like, I'm not stuck, I can do all of this stuff, and it's, it's cool. But just take it one step at a time, right? So you're going to start in a pose called Elephant's Trump. It's a really good core strengthener. So you're gonna bend one knee in, and then take your arm under it, like we've done some work with already, and then kind of right now, now Quasimodo's cool, and he only has one backpack strap on because it's the 90s and that's what we did. So pull the strap over and then kind of keep the leg and the arm there by moving the elbow back. So the hands end up by your hips. Flex the foot, lift the hips up, and then see if you can start to lift 
the other leg up. So I'm using my toes to kind of hook the foot and stay up. You can feel the strength happening right in the core just to do that. So try it on the other side. So this is prep for Asha Vikrasana. Right? And it doesn't matter if you can't get your shoulder. It makes it easier the higher you can get your backpack strap on. But it doesn't make it impossible if you can't get it, if you can't get it all the way up. And that's what she said. Uh, anyway, hands back. Flex the foot, push up, hook, and see if you can kind of float there. I always find one side's a lot easier than the other, which welcome to life, right? And just doing that like makes you work up a sweat. So you can stay there. This also is a really kind of uh, interesting way to get into Ashtavakrasana. So if you want to try that pose, you can get right up into our elephant's trunk hook. And start to swing your legs over to the side, start to come into what looks like chaturanga arms and hold. Right? Try it on the other side. Just generating heat, baby. That's all this is. Come up. Hey, sometimes you slip. Can you try again? That one side always seems so much easier than the other. When you've had your fun, shake the legs wide and stretch out the wrist. That can be a lot for the wrist. Just shake the wrists in circles. It's a good way to unstick energy anyway. And while you're at it, why not take the ankles in circles too? And let everything roll around. And take your arms out to the sides and just continue doing the rolls but move the arms up and down. Change directions as you come down. Do that one more time. This is why I can never be a drummer. I always wanted to so badly. I can never pass those tests to do like two different things at once. My feet are getting very confused. Okay, shake it out. Just come into an easy fold. Legs wide. Don't feel like you need to flex the feet or do anything at all. Just breathe. If it's in a position where you can let the head rest, then you have a block. Go ahead and do that just so the neck can relax. You should feel opening in the low back and a tiny bit in the hamstrings. If you're feeling it like super intense, maybe back off a little bit. And allow yourself to come into a place where the breath can be your focus. Close your eyes again if you can. Go ahead and come up, leave your legs as they are. Take your left foot, bring the sole into the inner edge of your right thigh. And you're going to take your elbow down, your right elbow inside the right knee. Let your head rest if you need a block or a pillow or something to prop the elbow up so you can do that comfortably. And then just reach the left arm up and over and you're gonna to try to grab kind of for the right shoulder or like a bra strap. Something to keep it easy for the left arm to stay there. And spend about a minute or two just letting the left side really start to 
to get out any knots or kinks there. We're trying to relax the muscles so that we can get more into the connective tissue or the fascia. And this is really where all of our energy runs with all of the energy channels, whether you think of them as nadis or meridians. We've done a lot of research as of late to show that those little lines of energy are very much real and are very much at home in the connective tissue of the body. So these kind of yin poses that we're getting into a little bit are really helpful for freeing up stuck energy. Take about three more breaths on this side. And then slowly, very slowly come up, release the left leg out, and just pause. So this is kind of like the rebound part of these energetic shifts. You don't want to do, go too quickly from one to the next. I always like to think of it as like scaring away the energy you just freed, right? It's like this like timid little deer that's coming out into the forest. And if you're like, ah, yeah, I did it. You're there, you're like, something goes away. So you have to be still and quiet. And then when you're ready, go to the other side. Take the sole of the right foot in. Left elbow inside the leg. Head rests. And then you can add the right arm. Just putting it in a place where it kind of gets stuck, the right hand, so that it doesn't have to work too much. And then noticing those areas of your body where you're wanting to tighten and let the muscles work it tends to be where the energy is stuck the most. Can you relax? Let your little deer come. about three more breaths on this side. And as you're ready, slowly as you can, maybe even keeping your eyes shut, extend both legs out, sit still for a moment. Quietly observing what is happening in the body. As you're ready, go ahead and make your way down to lie down on your mat in the middle. 
and then hug the knees into the chest. Come into a really simple twist or whatever would feel the best, whatever twist would feel the best right now. Spend about 10 breaths on each side. I won't even cue the switch, so just count about 10 breaths to each side. Finish twisting, hug the knees into the chest again, just lightly. Come to a really easy, happy baby pose. You can just take the hands to the outer edge of the feet and give me what they call the stirrup pose. So there's really no effort. Take some very purposeful, deep breaths here. And then as you're ready, we'll make our way into our final pose. You can do traditional Shavasana. Lately, I've been coming into more of um, what you'd call a Pentecost shape. So letting the legs go really wide. And then rather having the arms by my side, palms up. You bring the arms kind of as goal posts up over the head, palms face up. But just kind of experiment and see what works best for you. too precious about the shape. Once you find something that feels pretty comfortable, just commit to it. Keep eyes closed. And just visualize first the energy freely moving through your body. No more knots or sticky points in those energetic channels. Not only seeing it moving freely through the body, but actually feeling a small sensation of free flowing energy moving up and down all the way from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers. And just take a moment to feel being emotionally unstuck. What does it feel like to achieve success? Feel inspired and energized, passionate. Can you feel that shift in energy? A little bit more vibration happening. The universe wants you to be inspired. It wants you to live your dharma and to share it with the world. So it's there, it's supporting you all the time. So in those moments when you are feeling stuck, it's a very much real experience. You don't diminish that experience, but recognize that that isn't what the world or the universe and God or the divine isn't at all what they want for you. So when you can shift your energy and you 
and start to free things up and to commit yourself to getting out of that stuck place wherever it is. It's where you should be. You can start to feel it, feel everything changing around you. And just rest in that experience right now. You're ready to come out of this pose. Start to deepen the breath. Make some small movements back to the body. In whatever way feels the best for you today. Make your way up into a comfortable seat. It could be the same one you started class with. It might be something totally different. Once you're seated, go ahead and close the eyes again. In any hurry to get off the mat, take a few more moments just to thank yourself for practicing today, for opening up the lines of energy, for freeing yourself from any feeling of being stuck. We are all so much counting on you to be your best, to live your dharma, it's what the entire universe is needing right now. So bring your hands to heart center, just thank yourself for, for being who you are, commit that you will continue your work and you will not give up and you will be persistent and determined and passionate because that is what we are counting on, all of us, the whole universe. And then just take a moment here with hands at heart center to think of somebody else that could use a little bit of energy or inspiration today. Think of them by name. Dedicate this class and this practice to them. I'm dedicating this class to my dear friend, Lauren. I love you and just continue to do your work and to feel inspired. We're all counting. And then honoring yourself and that person that you thought of, bow your head. Namaste. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you loved class. I hope you share it with someone that needs this little dose of inspiration. And then please head over to yogineology.com. We have so much going on right now. I'd love to connect with you. Introduce yourself to me somewhere in social media land or uh, maybe in person, and I can't wait to see you again. Have a good day.